Welcome to the 9.1 video for Math 30-1 where we talk about rational functions. Um, this is just the instructional video. It's just talking about some of the general behaviors of rationals. Um, a rational function itself is a function where we can write it as a fraction with two polynomial expressions, um, one in the numerator, one in the denominator. Remember, polynomial expressions can be as simple as a number, though. So they give a couple examples here. Y equals 20 over X is a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Um, typically, when we talk about rational functions, if the denominator is a, a 1 or a 2, we generally don't call it rational. So really, the denominator needs to have a variable in it. Um, right away, some of the conversations you've had in previous courses come up again, um, which is the idea of non-permissible value. Values. So the most basic rational function we can look at is y equals 1 over x. Because we can't divide by 0, we would get the non-permissible value that x cannot be equal to 0, but it's any real number beyond that. So that's the domain of that function. What this graph actually looks like um, is pretty important because we are going to talk about transforming these functions and applying, you know, they show a vertical stretch in the textbook work right here. Um, when we look at y equals 1 over x, some pretty important concepts is that as x becomes very, very large, so far to the right on the horizontal axis there, um, we're dividing 1 by a successfully larger and larger number. Now, what happens, and it's nice to identify some key points, a really key point on this function is 1 comma 1. Um, you know, 1 divided by 1 is 1, but as x gets larger, the value of the fraction gets smaller. So when x is 2, we'd have 1 half. When x is 3, we'd have 1 third. Um, you know, when x is 10, we'd have 1 tenth. And what happens to this graph as x becomes very large is the value of y actually approaches 0. Now, there's a really important consideration there that you cannot actually divide 1 by a number and get 0. You know, 1 divided by 10 million is 1 10 millionth, not 0. So what happens is we actually get a horizontal asymptote, which is definitely going to be some of the new stuff in this chapter, is that a horizontal asymptote for this particular graph is at y equals 0. And that's really important because that actually leads us to the range of this function. And the range of this function is that y cannot be equal to 0, but other than that, it's every real number possible. And so the horizontal asymptote is a good way to visualize, you know, that non-permissible kind of output of the function. Um, when x approaches zero, what happens is we're dividing one by successfully smaller and smaller numbers. And if you have your calculator, check, you know, one divided by 0.5 is two, one divided by one third is three, one divided by one tenth is 10. And what we get is that this graph veers upwards with an asymptotic behavior. And there's another asymptote at x equals zero, and that's our vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So that is going to make these graphs kind of instantly a little more challenging in that they do have two asymptotes. You know, every rational we look at in chapter nine is going to have a horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote. Now to get the rest of this graph, what this graph has is something called odd symmetry, and that's not so important this year. But again, if we wanted to, we could plug in some values, and we can't put zero in for x, but we can put anything else. What if we put negative one in? Well, 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. So I get the point, negative 1 comma negative 1. And then essentially the same logic applies. Um, as we divide 1 by successively larger numbers, even if they're negative, we are going to be approaching 0. And as I divide 1 by numbers that are successfully getting closer and closer to 0, it veers down. But because they're negative, it goes down to negative infinity. And there's a lot of work involved in this type of function with calculus and limits. We're not going to do that because that's 30-1 math. But it really is a good maybe intro or beginner course into asymptotic behavior and what's actually happening here. Now, we are going to use some particular language here. And what we would say for this graph is as the absolute value of x approaches infinity, the graph approaches 0. And that's just the idea that on the far right-hand side and left-hand side of our x number line, we see that this function is approaching a value of 0 as we divide by larger and larger numbers. Now, there's one other thing that I like to do kind of right away, um, and that's to attach this with the function notation and our transformations. So if I identified f of x as 1 over x, then what I could do is if I did the transformation, so we'll say some transform function g of x is a times the function evaluated at b times x, at, sorry, b times x minus h, and then plus k. If we apply that to this specific f of x, what we would have is that g of x is equal to a times 1 over b times x minus h, and then plus k on the outside. Now, due to the nature of fractions, you're going to see this a ton in the textbook, they will simply multiply that a into the numerator. And one of the unique things about these functions is that instead of doing a and b, because these two numbers are dividing each other, you will often see us do rational functions without doing a horizontal stretch.
And I, I just want to kind of show you why we can get away with that. Uh, let's say that A was 4 and B was 2 we would have the g of x is equal to 4 over 2, and I'll just put maybe x minus 1 in there, and plus, uh, I don't know, 5, for example. Now, that, there's nothing wrong with that, but 4 is divisible by 2. So another way of writing that particular g of x would be that g of x is equal to 2 over x minus 1 plus 5, and I hope you agree that this looks just a little bit easier to deal with, and we're certainly going to try to do some simplification steps to make these rationals just a little bit easier to handle.